Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you are doing good and staying safe. Now in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the latest memoir by Priyanka Chopra that is unfinished. If you've been following me long enough, you know what a huge fan of Priyanka Chopra I am. So I was more than elated to get my hands on this book. I pre-ordered it before it even came out and I finished reading it just two days ago and I have so many things about it to share with you guys. So in this video, I'm going to be reading out a few excerpts from the book so that you get to know how it's written, what are some of my favorite stories that she's written about in the book and also give a very honest review of the book as a memoir and also as a fangirl. Now before we dive into the video, make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you haven't already and also don't forget to turn on your post notifications and also go follow me on my Instagram if you don't do that already so that you can get more updates about my life and also know what future videos I'm going to be posting. Now let's get into the video. So coming to the book Unfinished, I think it's such a beautiful and apt name for a memoir and it just reflects Priyanka Chopra's personality because she has never ending ambitions, she has conquered the world and I don't think this woman is going to stop anywhere and writing Unfinished as a memoir just makes us believe that there's so many more things to look forward to and I just love the vibe that just, you know, seeing the cover of this book and the title it gives me, I adore this woman so I'm gonna be fangirling throughout this video so just be ready for that. Now talking about the book first of all Priyanka Chopra starts off by talking about her childhood and then we move on to her pageant journey and as she grows up that's the timeline of the book. Now talking about her childhood she has mentioned that she comes from a very middle class uh, family background back in Bareilly where she was brought up and that is where her family decided before she moved to the States for a period of three to four years where she had some part of her schooling and then she came back. Now what I love about the stories that she has cited about her childhood is just the family support and the family values that have been inculcated into her from a very young age. Her parents always treated her like an equal person and not like a child and so every decision that they had to make she was included in it and just reading through that book sometimes you know it just makes you think that the person that you become eventually as an adult, a large part of that formation is done in the very early years of your childhood and so parenting matters so much and this book is an example of that and so one of the instances that I want to share with you for instance when they had their own house and the parents had their names written outside on the nameplate that usually you know in Indian households we have those nameplates and a lot of the times only the male names are written. What happened in Priyanka Chopra's case was that when she was born and she was living with her two parents, her mom's name and her dad's name was there on the nameplate. And when she asked her dad, I also live in this house, but why isn't my name written there? Instead of dismissing this comment from a kid like most parents would actually do in India, her dad actually took it very seriously, asked her what would you want your name and title to be on the nameplate and he got it there. And I think from a very young age, that is how you teach children that your voice matters and just because you're a child doesn't mean that you don't get a say in the household. So I love that about her parents. And one of the other excerpts that I want to share about Priyanka Chopra's childhood is another instance where when she was deciding to go to the States or rather when she was in the States and the decision to stay there and do her schooling there for a couple of years was being discussed. Now in the book she does reveal that this was all pre-planned by her mother in advance but they had let the actual and final decision be Priyanka's herself. And so I'm going to read that out. Although the setup had been engineered, the actual decision to stay in the States to attend school had not. And it was the first time I was given primary responsibility for a major decision about my life. At the age of a teenager, say 12, 13, I don't remember exactly what uh, age she was at. But I think in Indian households, usually children at that age are not allowed to make such decisions about their life. And usually parents are the ones dictating, which was not the case with Priyanka's parents, which I am absolutely in awe of. Going on, she writes, right before my mother left to head back to India, she said, now that you're going to live away from me, remember what we discussed about the pros and cons. Remember that this was your decision. And if you change your mind, dad and I will always be there to come back home to. I think that means so much that when you're leaving your child in a different country, even if they've made this decision, it's just so reassuring to know that your family is always there to go back home to no matter what goes wrong in life. And that helps in a lot of self-esteem and confidence and just it just prepares you to take on the world no matter what happens because you have that backing and you have those support pillars at home. You can call us for anything and whatever happens, 
try your hardest so that you will always know that you gave it your best shot. The short version, own your choices, or as my mother must have told me hundreds of times growing up, have the courage of conviction. And just the courage of conviction is just one of the few lessons that Priyanka talks about in this book. Her parents have given her so many valuable life lessons throughout the book that I've actually made notes and I will be sharing some of my favorite quotations from this book over on my Instagram story as well. So go follow me there if you want to see like a summarized version of my book review. Now this was one lesson. Another lesson that her dad had actually inculcated in her was be water. Just these two words and this lesson can be applied to so many situations in life. What he was trying to teach Priyanka was that no matter what the situation is, you can always mold yourself and you can always adapt to a certain situation. Water doesn't, you know, get affected by obstacles in its path. It just changes its path, it changes its shape and you just move around it. It's up to you whether when you see a wall, do you return and go back or do you cross that wall and if you're water you would just cross that wall and so I think that's such a nice lesson to inculcate in a child. Another instance of her childhood this was when she was back from the US after her schooling and this was before she actually went and registered for Miss India which her brother and mom actually hand had in but this was when she won a small pageant at a local clubhouse and so I'm gonna read out this excerpt from this book which actually explains as to where does Priyanka get that confidence from and I just love this paragraph and I've actually spoken about it in one of my previous videos so if you've watched all of my videos you would actually see some of the things that I say are things that I see Priyanka Chopra saying and writing about and this woman has made such a big impact on the way I think the way I approach life and everything and I just think she's so inspiring but I'm gonna stop blabbering now and read out the excerpt for you guys when I was crowned May Queen later that night the fake it till you make it brand of confidence that I had been projecting was somehow transformed into the real thing. The win reinforced the belief that my dad had tried to impress upon me when I was much younger, that if I wanted to, I could reinvent myself when I moved to a new place. When I moved back home from the US, I chose to be a new person and my reinvention looked like it was working. Part of that reinvention, I was realizing, meant continually digging deep for courage, establishing and re-establishing my confidence. Just three hours earlier, when I had been reluctant to enter the May Queen Ball, I had not had any. Now I did. She's talking about confidence here. The idea that confidence is not a permanent state was crystallizing in me, and I was beginning to sense that the harder I worked at being able to access it when I needed it, the better it would serve me. And so in one of my previous videos, this is what I was talking about. The fake it till you make it approach has to be there at some point in the beginning because you're not born with confidence. And in one of her videos, Priyanka Chopra has also said this, that confidence is not something that you carry all the time. It's something that you put back in your backpack and you take it out when you need it to be there. When you're going out in public, when you need to do some public speaking, when you have to go on a stage, when you have to basically put yourself in any situation where confidence matters, take it out. But you don't have to walk around in daily life feeling confident all the time or projecting confidence all the time. That is what is important, that you have it when you need it. Now, as we move ahead in the book, she starts talking about her actual Miss India and Miss World pageant journey, which is very interesting to read about. And I know a lot of my audience is very interested in pageants. So I would highly recommend this book just because it's Priyanka Chopra, but we will come to that at the end of this video. Now, I want to mention some of the instances that she cited. So one of the frequently asked questions is how important are subcontests, right? And so I want to tell here that even in the book, Priyanka Chopra herself has written this. During the competition, there were smaller pre-competitions like Miss Perfect, 10, Miss Congeniality, Swimsuit and Talent. I did not win any of them. So the myth that exists that if you don't win any subcontest, you cannot win the main thing. Obviously, that's false and I've been saying that in all of my videos. And this just, even I did not know this thing about Priyanka Chopra that she had not won any subcontest. And this was in the actual Miss India competition. Now, the format was quite different back in those years. But what I want to emphasize on here is that she also talks about this one quality of herself that actually made her stand out. And the phrase that I use, it's your differences that make you stand out, is again by Priyanka Chopra. And so I'm going to read out an excerpt here again. I had known the whole time that the one thing I wore best was my confidence. As long as I was not comparing myself with the other girls, which I sometimes struggled not to do. 
So one of the issues that Priyanka Chopra was facing now back in 2000 and 1999, fairness was something that most of the crowd was obsessed with and Priyanka Chopra is a dusky woman and so she was constantly uh, feeling insecure or comparing herself or expecting herself to not win because there were so many much fairer women in the crowd who were participating and she actually talks about a certain Miss Chandigarh who was there and she felt very conscious of her own skin color and her thighs and butt while walking in the swimsuit. Back in those days Miss India had a swimsuit round which has now been eliminated. Priyanka's story is actually an example of how none of these things really matter. She goes on to say that I could speak in front of other people, I could strike up conversations with strangers. Whatever I did, I almost always did with conviction, even when I was bad at it. But that night, as the competition wore on, I felt my limitations especially intensely. I knew I was a long shot. It's not that I was lacking confidence in myself. I felt I was being realistic. And so even though she ended up winning that night, Everybody gets the jitters, everybody feels nervous and everybody has one or two things that makes them feel sometimes that they're not going to win. But the confidence that she was exuding in the conversations that she struck were so impressive. And this is what I was talking about in one of my previous videos. Beauty wins attention, but personality wins hearts. And this is what I mean. The conversations that you hold with people is what makes you memorable. So your skin tone might not matter, but your personality does. Now, once Priyanka had won the Miss India pageant, she had started training for the Miss World pageant. And what my favorite thing about her Miss World pageant journey is that her family was constantly there, not just her immediate family, but also her extended family. And over time, you can see that your relatives, your extended family, like people like those, their support matters so much. So they had to travel from India to London for the Miss World. And it wasn't just Priyanka alone who went. Her entire family went there just to cheer her on. And I'm going to read out that excerpt as well. And it's so heart touching. And I love that. Every morning, mom would take a train into London from Hounslow, where she and dad and Sid, Priyanka's brother, were staying with family friends, the Upadhyayas, to offer me a cheerful wave and a bit of encouragement from afar before I boarded onto the bus. Even though there was no opportunity to speak on those mornings, she wanted to be sure that I felt her support. That is a very heartfelt and meaningful gesture to do for your child. When we returned to the hotel in the evenings, there was about an hour when we were free to visit any family who may have traveled to London. Mom was always there and she was always the last to leave. She was my anchor there for me morning and night. Even now, when I pass that London hotel, I can picture the buses parked there and the girls coming in and out and spot in the lobby where we used to meet our families. It means so much to have that type of family support. Even right now, you look anywhere in Priyanka's interviews and videos and photo shoots that she's doing, her mother has always been there. She's also the one who handles the business side of things for her. She's also, in a way, her manager, but not her official manager. But family support is something that is valuable to an extent that we do not understand at a very early age. But I think reading this book actually made me just understand that if I have kids someday, then I would definitely want to be there as much as Priyanka's parents have been there for him. And one of the consequences of such family values and upbringing that has on a child is that she was always brave enough to just voice her opinion. A lot of us sometimes don't feel like we have the right to voice our opinion in a certain situation or that we don't matter because at home the child was not made to feel like that and one of an instance where Priyanka actually did that was when she was at the Miss India auditions itself and after those three rounds were done that is ramp walk and introduction and swimsuit she actually went up to one of the panelists and asked for his mobile number because she wanted to just know the result and she said I want to plan my life and so I would want to know whether I got selected or not because she was too impatient to wait for the results, say for a few days and she wanted to figure out whether she's going to be giving her boards and all not. But that's a very brave thing to do. Most contestants even right now would not go up to a judge and just ask for their mobile number. Now whether you call that being naive or just having courage or conviction, it's up to you. But I think that just shows that the kind of person you are, this go-getter attitude is right there from the beginning. So nobody said that you can't approach a certain person. And I think things like that also left an impact on the organization because they knew that this woman knows what she wants and she's not afraid to speak her mind. And that actually counts a lot. And so to end my conclusion of how much family matters, 
another excerpt that finally concludes this point is if my family had not shown me through their actions that my dreams and ambitions were important and to be taken seriously i might never have believed in them or taken them so seriously myself that is so true my gratitude to the guiding forces in my life knows no bounds and and it's true because priyanka's parents were both doctors and while she, her and this is so true because priyanka's parents were both doctors and while priyanka's life was constantly changing with miss india and then miss world it's a lot to take in as a family as a whole also but they always adapted they always made changes and they also agreed both parents together that now is the time to focus on priyanka's dreams and priyanka's ambitions now soon after miss world priyanka chopra was of course bombarded with opportunities from bollywood and she does talk about that journey in this book as well and while it wasn't all rosy she did not come from a filmy background and so she does talk about the issue of nepotism and favoritism in the industry and she also talks about a certain instance where say she was not a great dancer to begin with but what matters is your hard work she gave it her all she did not think about the number of hours that she was putting in and just reading those instances is so inspiring because nothing comes easy if someone has reached that type of level of success in their life they were not just born with a silver spoon and she has worked really hard for it although yes it is true that opportunities came knocking at her door she never had to struggle as an actor she did not have to audition for several roles for several years to make it into bollywood but she did work really hard for miss world and so it's up to the readers choice as to how do you want to look at it some people will call her lucky some people will say that there was a lot of hard work everything that you do since the day you are born everything plays a role and so that is why i don't appreciate the fact that certain people are called lucky yes they got the opportunity but they did something for it while filming a certain movie on set one of the choreographers was very frustrated with priyanka and he said this one line to her which is stated in the book that is just because you are a miss world do not think that you can dance and fortunately that movie's filming had to be paused for 10 days and in those 10 days priyanka chopra went back trained under a very famous dance choreographer and came back and killed that scene and so to be able to do that in just 10 days again very inspiring she also lost a couple of roles in movies because of favoritism and so in one of the paragraphs here in this book she does touch upon that topic and i love her take on favoritism she says the thing about favoritism and patriarchy is that they make it an unfairly steep climb for a large number of talented deserving people whatever the field it's not just the film industry in which favoritism works it's actually everywhere having experienced that long hard climb myself made me want to be part of the community that is working to make it easier for those who follow we can't choose the family we were born into but we can choose our actions we all want to take care of the people we are closest to those sitting at our table but is there a world in which those who are blessed with more might build a larger table than building a higher fence and i love the way that she thinks about it just make the table bigger why does it only have to be that certain families who have always been at that table when we're speaking about bollywood and so towards the end of the book priyanka actually does talk about her own venture that she started with her mother that is purple pebbles entertainments and that's a production house which is actually focusing on you know uh, bringing these stories that are written by people who are not at that table and she wants those stories to come out and for example the white tiger and she also started producing movies which were not just about the bollywood favoritism circle that we all have been seeing for years and years and so she is actually trying to create that difference bit by bit and i think that's what matters now moving on in the book priyanka chopra had given us a series of hit films like dostana fashion saath khun maaf burfi and a lot of other things and she was one of the first few people who actually had the courage to take on very complex and negative female characters which was not something that a lot of female actors were doing at that point but she actually did that and i think that is what made all the difference a lot of people actually told her that why would you do this why don't you just go for the sweet girl next door image and take on those roles but to take on roles that you are scared about you don't know how it's going to pan out but i think it's the risk taking behavior that has served her very well throughout her life even after that she talks about her shift to hollywood where again i think one of the most 
courageous things that she's done is that even though she had become a sensation here and every Indian knew her but in Hollywood nobody knew her and so she talks about those instances where she had to start from zero again she gave the music career a shot and she actually got a lot of hatred and a lot of racist comments on some of the songs that she had done and also that the fact that she had to audition for Quantico it's not like she just got the role and to go from being like a big superstar in one country and going back to a room where you have to introduce yourself all over again it takes a lot of courage to do that to be okay with the fact that you know you just get used to so much comfort and fame and popularity and you don't have to audition for roles anymore and so for an actor to do that it takes a lot of guts and it actually shows that these things like fame and popularity don't really matter to you as much when you are that invested in your craft and you just want to make it big it's all about you know expanding your horizon it's not about staying in comfort zones and growth comes from coming out of your comfort zone and so that is exactly what she did and it took her a good two to four years till she was able to you know get interviews and get any press coverage in the Hollywood industry and she actually talks about that where the people who were helping her out her manager now all these people did not have a lot of experience managing an individual and how it was not just her alone it was a group of three to four people just figuring their way out in a new country in a new industry the language the terminology the process of how things work and everything was new to her I slipped into the ladies room and said a little prayer of thanks when I found it empty. I took a breath, gripped the edges of the sink in front of me and met my own eyes in the mirror. Priyanka Chopra, I said, as if I were my mother trying to talk some sense into me. What are you afraid of? You know exactly what you're doing. You can't even keep track of the number of movies you've starred in. That's how prepared and ready you are. Just go in there and do your work. So that was the pep talk that she gave to herself. I'm happy to report that sometimes those pep talks we give ourselves actually do work. Or maybe it was hearing my mother being channeled through me. By the time I entered the audition room, I was relaxed again and confident in my preparation. I felt something when I walked into the room. A heightened quality of attention I couldn't really put my finger on. I did the scene, was happy with the way it went and everyone was really nice. Two days later, I got a phone call that I had gotten the job. This was the role of Alex Parrish. Sometime after that, Josh Safran, the show's creator, said in an interview, when Priyanka walked into the audition, the molecules shifted and we all sat up straighter in our chairs. That is the power of confidence. The way you walk into a room can create that first impression and that is something that has been Priyanka's strength all along. So this was the chapter where she actually starts talking about her own Hollywood career and how Quantico happened and then how she was on the cover of the magazines over there in Hollywood and it was a long and slow and difficult journey but she persevered and I think that's very impressive to read and just Baywatch and everything that she was doing going to the Met Gala like this is something that no other Bollywood actor had achieved yet and yes there were people who followed in her footsteps but I think she was one of the first few people to take that leap of faith that we can go there and create a presence of South Asian industry and you know she was actually the face of that. Even if you notice, Alex Parrish has an own bracelet on her hand. And so in small, small ways, Priyanka Chopra was actually reflecting the Indian culture over there. And those were the tiny things that made her feel good about that too. The book also touches upon a lot of issues and social media hatred and controversies that she got involved in. And a lot of things that in hindsight just look really funny and people just tend to overreact on the internet over every little small thing and so she actually touches upon those topics and how she also is a person just because you're a public figure does not mean that you're not exactly affected by it and so it was pretty interesting to actually read how she was personally feeling about these things especially that armpit controversy that had gone viral which I also thought was hilarious and she actually talks about it and also the time when she met the Prime Minister of India wearing a short dress and again the internet just went after her for not wearing a sari while meeting such an honorable person but it was actually because she was actually promoting some other movie or in fact Quantico itself and so you can't really be changing outfits if you just happen to meet someone and here I want to read out an excerpt where Priyanka Chopra shares her conclusive thoughts on social media so she was actually one of the first few Bollywood actors to get on Twitter and engage with her fans and audience over there but here she says I am concerned that we have all become so afraid of our differences that we step back every time we encounter them if only we could strive to take small steps towards ideas and people that are different in order to understand them 
When I say we, I'm including myself. I have just acknowledged after all that I've taken a step back from the internet. My hope is that we can all work to find ways to be curious and kind, which would be a step towards bringing us together in spite of our differences, rather than letting our fears and insecurities become shackles that keep us apart. I think that's beautiful and everybody on the internet needs to take a chill pill and just understand that just because someone is different from you or something that you do not feel familiar with does not mean that it's bad or it's wrong and you don't have to bash everyone who is different from you. The next few chapters of the book talk about her dad's demise, how she coped with that grief for at least two years in her life, how her dating life also had a role to play in how she was feeling and I'm sure with that type of work schedule it becomes very difficult to be romantically involved with someone and how she used to feel that the characters that she played on screen were so different with, from the actual person that she is. And while she played the character of a very independent, fierce woman, I think inside every woman there is a tiny part of you where somehow you just end up trying to make it work so much, your relationship, that you forget who you are as a person. And sometimes it's just too late by the time you realize how did I end up in this unhappy situation? And so that also happened to her multiple times. And I think breakups and relationships like that teach you so many lessons and it just prepares you for the final relationship of your life. And that is my approach to life all the time. Every single breakup that you've had, every single bad relationship, every bad decision that you've made, don't regret it in the sense that don't make yourself feel like you're a failure. No, everything that happens in life leaves some lessons with you and it's just how you choose to look at it. The part where she talks about meeting Nick Jonas finally and how you just know when you meet the right person and how he checked off all of the boxes that she had in her mind, how he just sweeped her off her feet and they were engaged two months after they had started dating. That story is beautiful. I would not want to give away those spoilers. I would really want you guys to read that through. And towards the end of the book, she also talks about her own philanthropy. She is a UN Goodwill ambassador. And something that she writes here is about using your voice to create a difference in the world. So I want to read that out here. At some point after I became a public person, I realized that having a platform where people would be willing to hear what I have to say could be one of my greatest strengths. And so I decided to use my voice to amplify the voices of people who were not being heard. My job then is to be a means to an end, to get the attention of people and direct it to the conditions or situations that cry out for change. For example, when I did a Facebook Live event from Kutu Palong refugee camp in Cox's Bazar in Bangladesh, it generated 10 million users, 4.4 million views and nearly 500,000 engagements, making it the most successful Facebook Live event ever hosted by UNICEF. I correct myself here, she's a UNICEF ambassador, not a UN ambassador. I believe that I have a duty and a responsibility to use my platform to amplify the voices of those forgotten, ignored or abandoned by the society. And as long as I can see that using my voice gets results, I'll keep doing it. And so that's what she's talking about. You don't have to empty your pocket to be a philanthropist. It's all about how you use your voice. And so whenever I talk about what will you do with the platform that Miss India gives you or Miss World gives you or any pageant, as long as you're a public figure, it I think it's so important to use your voice for a good cause because there are people that are going to look up to you. What you say will be read about, will be written about. People are going to give certain more importance than normal to your words and so you have to be very very careful as to what message do you want to spread and what is the impact that you want to create in this world. The simple gifts of time, energy and compassion can be life-changing for those on the receiving end. Those gifts make our world a much kinder place and that's the world I want to live in, a world of kindness and compassion in action. That was the last excerpt I was going to read from this book. I am absolutely in love with this book. Now, if I have to review this book as a memoir, I would not say it's the best memoir that I've read. But if I have to read it as a book that I've just wanted to read ever since I was a child, then I would give this a 5 on 5. There are certain issues and topics and controversies about herself that we have heard over the years that were not really touched upon and certain instances that she cites will make you think okay so if that was the case and this is the truth why did you not say it in public say 10 years ago why was it not addressed 
there could be any number of reasons and i will sound biased here because i am a huge admirer of priyanka chopra and no matter what the reason was for writing this book a lot of people have been calling it a publicity stunt but again my take on that is why would she not she's done so much in her life why would she not make money out of this book why would she not expand her business she will make investments she's been doing so much and conquering the world is not something that you can just do without doing all these things and so anybody in her place would be doing the same so why bash someone and i think this is the difference is that we have to learn to accept just because someone is climbing up the ladder does not mean that you are going down and so that is my take and review about this book i am absolutely in love and i would highly recommend it to any young girl out there because no matter what is included in the book what is not i'm sure there is so many lessons that you can take away from this book things her parents have taught her family values how you approach life that go getter attitude every single chapter has something that imparts a lesson and so i would highly recommend this memoir and in my opinion i would give it a 5 on 5 i hope you guys enjoyed this video and liked me reading out the excerpts and enjoyed my review of this book let me know if you've read the book already or if you're planning to and just leave me your feedback and review about the book in the comment section below i would love to have a whole conversation going on about this book as always i love you guys so so much and i will see you very soon in my next video bye bye